Uh, talking with singer songwriter and producer Mike McClure. Uh, Mike, first off, how you doing, buddy? I know you had a long I'm, weekend. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm a little tired. I uh, went out with the Great Divide. We started playing shows again, and uh, that that's fun. We went up to Ponca City on Friday and got rained out like five minutes right before we come out to play. Oh. Rain, rain hit us, but then we went down to Hamilton, uh, Texas, and then and played. Uh, played a show out in, on a street party at the grain and it was really big crowd and really cool so i'm realizing how out of shape i've been from sitting around during covid and and not putting on shows so everybody's recovering today not from alcohol just from being older <laughs> yeah you need to do like a rocky four montage <laughs> yeah training <laughs> except getting back at it uh when did you start with the reunion shows with the great divide summer we we started booking some shows before covid hit and we had a quite a few a pretty big tour set up and uh and then of course that hit and put an end to all of that yeah. so this this year uh we're, we're starting to go back out and as we play more shows more offers start coming in as people become more aware that it's the original great divide and you know we started in 1992 so we go we go pretty far back into the to the red dirt beginnings. Yeah. So uh, whenever you're doing that process with them, is there any talk of writing new music or, or are you just kind of going back to the old tunes or? Well, for the shows right now, you know, we, we just cover all, a lot of the old songs and add a couple new ones. We did a, we put out a, a double, double disc. Or what do you call it? Record, a double record yeah. <laughs> of uh, kind of a greatest hits thing. And uh, that's a that's on iTunes, and there's four new songs on that actually, and uh, but here recently we've been talking about, and we're going to go in November or December back with Lloyd Maines, and Lloyd was an integral part of our our career. He was the he was the guy who produced our first records, uh, our first three albums, Going for Broke, which was in '94. We did that one in Lubbock, and then Breaking the Storm. We did that in '90 eight in austin with lloyd and then we did uh, revolutions that had yesterday road and and a lot of that stuff we did that with lloyd as well so hooking back up with him is uh exciting for all of us because he really formed our band you know we were really terrible when we made our first record and you know we had some songs and and you know i wasn't comfortable singing and some of the guys hadn't really played in a band and but it, it became a band, you know, when we got together, it became a, a unit that worked together. And over time, you know, it just kept getting better. And But if it wasn't for Lloyd Maines, you know, some of y'all might know Lloyd from the Maines Brothers days or, or his famous daughter, Natalie Maines, from the Dixie Chicks. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Lloyd played with Jerry Jeff Walker, Robert Earl Keane, a lot of people we really looked up to as a band. And... Uh, and so we were very fortunate to get with him in the beginning, and, and it's going to be cool to be able to, to go back. Because we haven't made a record with him since 1999. Wow. And, uh, what is that, 70 years? Something it's like be, that. I think do the math on that. Sounds about right. <laughs> so what do you think he brings Lloyd? Because I, I, I've talked to other songwriters who get to work with Lloyd Maines. What do you think he brings to the table that really helps you guys solidify the overall sound of what you've got going on? Lloyd is, uh, he's an inter interesting guy, man. He's a, an amazing, amazing musician. And he's one of those guys that he brings your playing up, not because he's trying to intimidate you. You're just, uh, I don't know. When we were younger, especially, we were just in awe of him, yeah. you know, and, and uh, just a cool, humble, funny guy. And, but he's the kind of guy to where you want to play your best in front of. And that's yeah. probably the one of the best traits a producer can have is where, you know, we had enough respect for the records that he did and, and how well he could put songs together and music together. And, uh, yeah, you just want to – and it's cool for me because I've made a, a million records after working with Lloyd when I was younger. And now I'm excited thinking, oh, i got to play these songs for Lloyd. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so I'm starting to kind of gather them in a different way, more like – and that's good, you know. I think that's that's how a producer pulls pulls the best up out of somebody. Is they're wanting not to please them, but not let them down, uh, you know, yeah. just to bring your best because you know 
that he's on a level that that's higher than yours. So you want to get up on that level. Yeah. And yeah. and that's that's really what he brings and brought to the table. And hopefully we'll see. Excellent. Well, I'm excited about that. And knowing Louie is going to be a part of it, that's just kind of uh, makes it even more interesting. Excited about the album. Now, yeah. you, you, speaking of albums, you just uh, released one last year in 2020, uh, which had to have been a hard time to release an album during COVID. Uh, but did you already, just listening to some of the lyrics, I wanted to know, did you have the album done before COVID and just release it during then? Or was was any of it part of the COVID uh, uh, process? Like, did any of the process of writing have to deal with what was going on in 2020? You know, it was a matter of, I, I always have a bunch of songs that I'm, I'm writing. You know, that's my favorite thing to do, my favorite part of it. So I, I, I went through a divorce a couple years ago, and, and now I'm in a new relationship, and it's really a healthy one. And, and I've been really looking into, you know, th things about myself that I needed to work on. And, and COVID really allowed me to just stay home and not be distracted by running up and down the road and work on myself and, and uh, you know, and really get introspective about what was going on in my life. And, and so some of the songs were older songs, but under the light of COVID, it, it, it really put them into a, per, a different perspective, you know, of like, okay, I want to say something now. And, and, you know, it, it, they may not have been directly written about COVID, but, but they fit, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, some of the songs were dealing like I am not broken. You guys played for me. That one, uh, that one was dealing with a, a lot of loss over the years because it, it, I lost a lot of mentors and really some of my best friends all in just one right after the other. Tom Skinner, my old bass player and mentor and a guy named Steve Ripley from the tractors. He was uh, a good friend of mine that, that passed. And then, Joe Hardy, who he's been my, I've uh, he's mixed records that I've produced for years and been my musical partner and uh, for about ten years, and he did he did records like Steve Earle's Copperhead Road and ZZ Top stuff, and was just an older guy that really took me under his wing and 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 taught me how to make better records and and you know lost him too, so there was a lot of. A lot of trying, trying to just find some peace in all of that, you know, take the good and, and uh, somehow move on. And then being locked down for COVID, you know, there was really no excuse not to make a record because I was locked inside of a studio, couldn't go anywhere for months on end. It's like, if I don't make a record now, <laughs> you, know, you know, what's the excuse? What would be the excuse? And I hadn't made one in five years, just... I, you know, I don't really know why. I think I just did so many that that I lost focus, I guess. And then, and then when when COVID came around, I know it was horrible, but I, there's a lot of good that did come out of 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 stopping and and sitting down and and you know looking at some of the things that are going on in the world. And I definitely did did a lot of that. And I think it it comes out in the record. Yeah, I I think a lot of people were affected in different ways in 2020. Most of the songwriters I know, you're always running to the next show. You're always trying to do interviews. You're, you have so much of a hectic life whenever you're touring and playing and performing that 2020, which I call the long pause, is it <laughs> was, was like a moment to kind of say, oh, this is what, this is the refreshing moment that I've been waiting for, that I keep telling myself I'm going to do. And, mm -hmm. um, then it, and then it happened. So it was good on you to to take the moment and really shine on it, or at least make sure that you were working through some stuff. Um, I noticed that during COVID because I was following you online. And uh, I, I know that, like, to be candid here a little bit, I, I noticed there yeah. was a little bit of pushback from some of the people who listened to you, I noticed online. Um, yeah. Whenever I would see what I perceived as just messages of love, and understanding towards your fellow human, which I think we were having a lot of problem uh, getting that message out or or just understanding that message during that time. Um, did any of that get into your writing or to your mentality, just the pushback oh, yeah. sometimes uh, from from the online presence? Yeah, you know, and it 
Honestly, it, that came down to like for the first year I, I started paying attention to politics. I I never did. I was too busy running up and down the road, and you know that's not a great excuse, but it was what happened. And you know, and then I decided to quit drinking a couple of years ago, and that really brought me a lot of clarity. And then all of a sudden I was raw and sober, and twenty twenty hits, and, and I'm looking around trying to make some sense of it, you know, and 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 dealing with. You know, whatever political side people are on. And just trying to find a... I, I never posted anything even quasi-political. And then just putting something out there and just seeing this horrible backlash of stuff. And it was interesting. And at first it just shocked me. You know, just... Because if, like, one side somebody disagreed with was saying something... Just because they're on that side, it, it was negated. You know, and it just really unhealthy time and in america i think a part of me though thinks that if if you're not getting some pushback from somebody somewhere you may not be doing anything you know yeah or or, or saying anything and you know and, and looking out for me looking at black lives matter and things like that that were going on and i wanted to write about it because it was when i was younger reading about civil rights issues and and seeing Martin Luther King Jr. and the marches and stuff and thinking, oh, this, this is still going on today. And, and just trying to, you know, look at it from someone else's point of view, not my own. And, and so I, I really tried to do that. And then, yeah, I got some pushback from people who, I, they grow up in, in a tribal mindset, you know, yeah. as far as just the lack of being open to someone else and having empathy for people. Just, you know, I... If somebody's going to push back on me for trying to love somebody when I don't really need them. It is, it is an odd thing that I, 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 I think I read and reread your post and I was like, I'm trying to look at the part that's divisive. I just, I, I, I remember reading that and then seeing your music was writing and this, I, I've been following you and watching your process and your uh, moments of sobriety. And plus I know the, uh, your wife. So that made it a little bit easier because I understood kind of a, a background of what you were going through and who you were going it. <laughs> who you were going that through with and yeah. i know she's a very accepting person so i just knew that you were both coming from a place of love that uh, i really appreciated seeing it was very refreshing to be honest with you man and i want to thank you for that because well uh, thanks for bringing it up you know a lot of people just try to blow right by it, by it because it's difficult you yeah. know I do, I do want to get back to the album real quick um and talk about coincidentally enough the song distractions um huh? there was <laughs> i love i love a good segue mike <laughs> The uh, the lyric that really stuck out to me in the whole album, and I love it, it says, quote, I like it when the words just want to fall out. I like them better when they don't even feel like mine. Yeah, so I like that one too. When I get in that zone of uh, of writing, when I can connect, it. the main thing is kind of distracting my brain, another segue, distracting my <laughs> brain enough <laughs> To where I, I used to be a pa I used to paint houses when I was younger, and I'd get my brush going, and then I'd start babbling to myself and writing songs, and it's kind of a matter of distracting my brain so I can hook up with my heart and just just start talking, and, and instead of trying to analyze it before it comes out, I just start let it go and just you know I'm not afraid to stand in front of my mirror by myself and babble incoherently because eventually something's going to click on and i'm going to speak speak from the heart and a lot of times it speaks before my mind has a chance to even know what it's saying that's not always good but <laughs> <laughs> you know but but that's when the words they they don't even feel like mine they're just they're just coming out you know that's the that's the sweet spot of writing and, and not all all songs are like that but the ones for me that last and resonate the most with people, I feel like they come out in a very, very quickly. It's not something I'm sitting really, you know, rewriting, writing, rewriting. You know, it's just man, there, there, there it was, and and that line especially, that's that's talking exactly about that. It's another one of those lines that really stick out to me about yours. I was talking to you before we started recording about how I would listen to the station and it never failed when I heard a line that I was like, oh man, that one's freaking amazing. Who is that? And it was always Mike, McC it was always <laughs> either the great divide or Mike McClure. So uh, 
<laughs> well, uh, I did notice that you have been doing a push to Americana music. Is this the first time pushing to Americana? Uh, you know, we, we pushed some old Great Divide stuff back in the day, like back in the 90s. There was a Americana Gavin chart a long time ago. And uh, Jesse Scott uh, from uh, WMOT out in Memphis, uh, she, was, she was a big part of that. But uh, this is the first of my own uh, solo music that I've I've had any kind of a push. You know, we hired a a really good publicist, uh, Sarah Frost out of New York, and then uh, Angela Backstrom out of Ohio. To uh, she did a a great job. You know, just what's cool about that Americana chart is I, I look at that chart and I'm like, oh oh cool, he's on there or or she's on there. You know, and it's. It's it's music I want to be surrounded by, and one of the coolest coolest parts of the thing was when we were doing the record. Kristen, my wife, and I, she helped me co-produce it, and we we sat and we listened to Tom Petty's Wildflower record uh, over and over, and just like man, this this is one of the most amazing albums ever, and wanted to emulate it in some ways, and we we listened and and got to noticing that the drums rarely hit the crash cymbals; they just kept that beat. You know, so we incorporated that part and 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 just some of the I don't know, the approach was was kind of a Tom Petty approach to it. And then when our record came out, Tom Petty's Wildflowers that release uh, his re-release of that album came out at the same oh. time. So we were on the chart together with that album. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, that was just one of those cosmic winks, you know, of like, yeah, you're on the right path. That's okay. awesome. I, I was just discussing that album last night. I was saying how Rick Rubin's uh, probably my favorite producer of all time. And I said, name name a band and their best album to me uh, is, is always Rick Rubin. And I said, Tom Petty, my favorite album from Tom Petty, Wildflowers, easily, um, yeah. because it's done so well. And he was able to grab everything that Tom Petty was and put it down to this this perfect moment in, in uh, his career. So that's yeah, so I cool that you little... said that. I saw a clip of, of Rick Rubin talking to Tom Petty, and he's like, man, Tom, I just don't think you're you're 100% today. I don't think you're really being Tom Petty. And and it was kind of weird to watch somebody would say that to him, but that's that's what he needed. You know? Yeah. Because you know he's going to go, what are you saying to me? You know who I am? <laughs> but Tom then he's going to come back and be Tom Petty, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's ability of a producer to, to do that and to – um. To, to get the best out of that artist for that mm -hmm. album uh, is... is that's a hard thing to say, you know? Yeah, definitely. So so cool that you're mentioning that. I really enjoyed the new music. I love that you're in a nice, peaceful place in life. It is it is fun to watch you online. And I got to say this also. One of the things that I noticed is, is from around here, before I let you go, right around this region, and I, I know it's got to be other regions, so don't get me wrong. But right around here, you get so much love and so much appreciation. Um, what do you, What do you, I mean, is that, do you notice that around this area? Like you said, you live near Seymour. But right. I know a lot of dudes in Seymour that talked so much about you when I first started with the Red Dirt scene. And to this day, continue to talk about you. Is it, is it, you said something earlier about it. It's 35 years, man. But, but, yeah. but, but uh, is there something, is it because you came here and hung out at like houses and hung out at places? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think great divide, you know, we, we used to go to a town and this is pre-internet, you know, and uh, that's crazy <laughs> to even think about. Oh, the other day, some kid come up and told me, Hey man, my, my grandma had your tapes. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma had your tapes. Oh, but uh, yeah, you know we 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 always try to talk to people at shows. You know, there there have been years when it got a little hectic and crazy. You know, in the late nineties. But yeah, we'd go to towns and just hang out. And back in the day, hang out and drink beers with people and and just just be present, and be kind. And and you know, we we were big fans of Willie Nelson and and got to play shows with him and would see him after the show, just sitting out by his bus, shaking hands, thanking people. You know, smiling being appreciative of it you know people have have given me a career you know in, in this area especially you know it's uh and i just moved here from oklahoma so i'm a i'm a texas texas man now uh -oh. took me a second <laughs> to say that didn't it you almost swallowed a little bit like whoa that's a, yeah. <clears throat> that's a weird texas. taste i live in texas 
No, but I'm, I'm glad to be down here. It's really cool. I, I don't really see all that many people because I live out in Gory, and uh, you know we've got a big garden out back, and we're in the middle of a bunch of wheat fields. And only time I go to town, really, I go to Monday to the Dollar General store. <laughs> That's about <laughs> all the <coughs> human contact I have till I go to a show. Well, okay. Before I let you go, I got to ask you this one because it's a conversation I bring up, and if I have you on the on this uh, call, yeah. then I really want to mention this. I talk about songwriters from Oklahoma in a sense where I try to explain to people from Texas, I say, I think it's just way, it's just a pure type of writing that comes out of Oklahoma. And I always say, maybe it's because of Texas being right there. Uh, and so it's maybe like a Boston, Philadelphia's attitude toward New York. Like, oh man, look at those guys. They're just constantly so shiny. Look at these guys. And, and, and so it's like this, like tough attitude where you have to write more pure, but, or maybe it's a very healthy competitiveness amongst some of the writers out there. But if I was to name all my favorite writers at the end of it, you would notice the majority of them are from Oklahoma. I just think it's kind of a, where Oklahoma sits, there's just so much influence. Uh, for, for me, how I got into writing songs is, is when I moved to Stillwater and got around what, they called their own music Red Dirt, and that was Tom Skinner, Bob Childers, Red Dirt Rangers, you know, some of the older guys in Stillwater. And Great Divide, we came in, and I soaked that up as a writer, but also at the time, I was going down to Texas seeing Robert Earl Keane, Jerry Jeff Walker, you know, got to meet Guy Clark and hang out with him uh, when I was younger. And... And then it was, it was trying, to me, it was like, ah, these writers, you know, all those guys I named and just blew me away. And then mixed with what I'd been learning in Oklahoma from those guys, it was kind of just an amalgamation of those. And uh, so they're kind of hard for me to separate, you know, as far as Texas, Oklahoma, Red Dirt, and whatever you want to call it. To me, it was always just really good songwriting. And, and uh, you know, Steve Earle was kind of an archetype for me you know I was like man look at this guy he's saying some really cool lyrics with a a good rock and band you know and, and wanted to to emulate some of that but you know I would go out to the place called the farm which was kind of the the legendary old Stillwater place where the songwriters used to go and uh you'd sit around a fire and, and you know, I'd want to like I'd play one of my songs, and then I'd hear some other people's, and their songs blew mine away. And so, sent me back to the drawing board, and that's what a lot of it, because there's a lot of people out there drawing some beautiful things, and you would sit around and and hear that, and then then go work on your own to try to hang. You know, it was competitive, but in a positive way, not like, you know, like a metal scene to where they're like, your band sucks. And yeah. This is more, more like you're, you know, wow, that's really good. I, I, I want to have one that good, and so I, I've got to go back and work. Yeah. And I think everybody influenced each other. I was around by, you know, it wasn't. A, I, I suppose there's some competition to it of like, well, I want one too. I, I, I want to move people to. Yeah. But, uh, I never looked know. at a competition as a bad thing. You had Lennon McCartney. Soundgarden, mm -hmm. Pearl Jam, uh, Willie yeah. Whalen. These are these uh -huh. are dudes that did better because of that healthy competition, you know. So. Yeah, and and Stillwater was good because like when the Great Divide hit, we we started getting cross Canadian ragweed to come open and Jason Bolin and all those guys and and then they do the same for other bands. I'd, I'd see it just kind of being passed along and and that's healthy, you know. That's it's a brotherhood of musicians and that's the way it should be. It's 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 a good way good way to be awesomeness uh, i've been talking with uh, singer songwriter producer mike mcclure he's going to be doing some dates uh this summer including july 10th over at the seymour rodeo you can catch that well mike man thank you so much for uh taking some time out talking Absolutely. with me a little bit about the new album he's got the new one out that you can check out uh looking up uh the first one in five years mike thank you for joining me Thank you, man. Thanks for playing all my stuff. I actually hear it on the radio when I'm driving around, and I feel good about it. All right. Well, we love some Mike McClure, man. We're going to do it up. <laughs>